Hey guys, what's going on? Fred London here. Today we're going to be talking about a bunch of different stories, so make sure you watch the whole video. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's get into the first stories. So the first story is that Arsenal are potentially rivaling Chelsea for the £53 million transfer of Versatile Star, and that is, as you can see down here, Ashraf Hakimi. Now, the, the situation at left-back is essentially... We're in the lead for Alex Telles, and I think it is going to be Alex Telles that we sign. Of course, we talked about Tagliafico. I think that's died down a little bit. Hakimi is a very good option, but I think Telles is, you know, we're in pole position. Other clubs are pulling out because we're basically in, like, as far as talks can go at this stage, we're pretty much there at the moment is what I'm hearing. So Ashraf, Ashraf, Ashraf I don't even know how to pronounce it, I forget. Hakimi, uh, as you can see here, 22 appearances with 3 goals, 10 assists, and a 7.36 rating. So this guy... Obviously, he plays right back, I think, mainly, um, but can play left back. He plays all along the right side and pretty much all along the left side as well. So this guy is very versatile, like it says in this article here. But I, <clears throat> I think he's sort of a backup option in case we don't get Alex Telles, and I'm fine with that. I think this guy is really good, but his parent club is Real Madrid. And I think we might struggle to get him. I think Real Madrid probably do want to keep him because they can see that he's a good player. He's been on loan at Dortmund and done pretty damn well. So I think we'd struggle to get him. But you know, for 53 million, when we could be getting Alex Telles for a much cheaper price, I think I'm happy with Alex Telles. Um, Arsenal can try all they want. I don't think they'll be spending anywhere near 53 million on him. So I don't think Arsenal will get him. I also think he's more of a backup for us. So that's a situation at left back. Now moving on to the second story which is quite an exciting one, we've got Jadon Sancho will reject a move to Man United if they fail to qualify for the Champions League. So that's some pretty big news, this is um, all coming out through reports, this is on the Daily Mail. Um, the situation as I see it is we don't know if fifth is going to get Champions League because of Man City obviously their whole situation this season, they might be banned from the uh, European competitions. So they would end up getting, you know, Champions League football in fifth as it stands. Um, they could also finish higher if the season is played out, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I think Chelsea are pretty secure in um, getting Champions League spot. That, I think, puts us in pole position to get him. Which is strange, because I've seen a lot of reports at the moment, literally today coming out, saying that uh, he's basically going to Man United, that he's decided Man United and none of these obviously reports are solid, like all the reports that we see are through, you know, this guy saying this, this guy saying this, it's passed down through a train of people, um, if there even is any solidity to the rumours, but normally it's passed down through a train of people and eventually the details get muddied up somewhere, like maybe Jane Sancho, Sancho said, yeah I could go to Man United, and then people have gone boom, take that headline, gone, and then it just gets like sort of recycled from paper to paper, from person to person, and then you get these weird stories. So I wouldn't take any of these sort of, you know, if you're hearing like, oh, he said he's going here, he said he's going to Chelsea, he said he's going to Man United, I wouldn't take any of it, you know, as truth until you see him saying it and you're like, okay, damn, if he said, you know, yeah, I'd love to play for Chelsea next season or something like that, then sure, that's a really good sign that he's coming to Chelsea. But until you see it, I'd be a little cautious on it, even if it is, you know, he's saying anything good about coming to us and then good about saying that going to man united any other club in fact like always consider that what you hear might be sort of twisted in a way so him saying he'll reject united if they fail to qualify for champions league i do think he would only be going to a club that is played in the champions league so it does kind of make sense in that regard The next piece of news then is something that I haven't really touched on yet, but it's good news in that um, Faustino Andrian has signed a contract until 2025. Um, you know, he's got a handful of minutes in the Premier League this season towards the end, but never really, you know, we, got, we didn't get to see him shine, sort of. But I do think this guy is a great talent. I think he'll be good for the years to come. So I'm glad to see that he signed a new contract up to until 2025 as well. That's a long contract. I'm glad to see that we're locking down all of our youngsters. I think that's going to be good for the club. So thank you, Fustino Andrew, and I hope to see you on the pitch for the first team soon. Then on to the final piece of news for today. We are talking about Napoli joined the Emerson race, but he still wants to fight for his place at Chelsea. So Juventus, Inter and Napoli are all after Emerson Palmieri. Now, 
my position on this is I'm fine with either Marcus Alonso or Emerson being sold because obviously we need someone at left back so I think it makes sense to have one of them sold, keep the other one and then bring in someone like Alex Ellis to be the first place guy. And I actually think it's kind of good news to see that Emerson wants to stay and fight for his place because, you know, if we're bringing in Alex Telles and we want to not have to buy another left back, because if you buy two left backs, then they're both going to be very eager to start. So that's a bit of a dodgy situation. So I think seeing that Emerson wants to stay is a good thing. I think we can sell Marcus Alonso. I know he, as of recent, he's scored some great goals for us, but... You know, one of them has to go, em and uh, Marcus Alonso not the greatest defensively. Emerson does have a better defensive side. I think he needs to improve slightly, of course. But I think I'm glad to see that he wants to stay, because that basically just means we can buy Alex Telles, be starting him if he, you know, is performing as we expect him to. And then Emerson is there to sort of push him on and try and fight for that place. And if he does improve, then sure, Emerson starts. But I think that's good news to see that Emerson wants to stay at Chelsea. I think all in all that gives us a very good, solid sort of left-back position sorted. So there we go guys, that's all the news we had. Ashraf Hakimi apparently, um, Arsenal are now after him, which will be interesting. I'd be very surprised to see them pay that much for a left-back. Of course they've got Hector Bellerin who's had his injury problems, never really turned out to you know the heights that Arsenal fans always claimed he would be at. But they're after him. Jadon Sancho will reject Man United if they don't qualify for the Champions League. So if Man City win their, you know, cast situation, then it's very possible that Man United aren't getting Champions League football and Sancho won't be going there at all, which leaves us in pole position, I would say. Then we had, of course, Fustino Andrian signing a new contract. That is great news all around. I'm glad to see it because the guy does look like a real good talent. And then finally, Emerson looking to stay at Chelsea and fight for his place, which is good to see. I think that means that we possibly will see... Marcus Alonso going. Um, I think Marcus Alonso might be happy to leave. He hasn't got, you know, a first team slot positioned as of yet. Um, so I think he would be happy to leave. I'll be iffy on it because I, I'm happy because in general we have more complaints across the years with Marcus Alonso than we do have good points. But he does come up in very clutch moments, so it's good to have a play like that. But we'll see how it all pans out. One of the left backs are going anyway. But that's going to be the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.